Hello everybody. So today we have some excellent news. Uh, Google and Kairos Power, they are going to work together to deploy next gen nuclear power plants. And, and this is a very interesting uh, situation that is going on. So what's in the news? Um, personally, I believe that we're living in a nuclear watershed moment or the watershed uh, <clears throat> because what you, what you see is that the positive news about new nuclear deployments, about new uh, relationships that are being built about new intentions that you know are are being signed uh, it, it, it keeps coming it, it's day after day it's week after week and it just keeps going and keeps going and, and that's why I call this the watershed for nuclear and I think that uh, many of this is uh, thanks to the experience that we've had in the West uh, the last couple of years, uh, especially coming off co Corona, uh, coming off the gas crisis with Russia, uh, seeing how uh, Germany is basically uh, making a mess of things when when we consider the you know the German economy, uh, but also uh, you know if you look at how much nuclear that they used to have and, and just closing all that down uh, recently a, a, a scientist a german scientist did a did a paper on how much this should have cost the germans and and, and he believes that uh closing all the nuclear power plants has cost uh the german uh, society 700 billion euros add to that another 700 billion euros of renewables that they that they try to build to offset the loss of the nuclear and, and, and you're in the trillions already uh, so, so many countries right now their eyes are open and and, and also a lot of big companies their eyes are, are open as well and, and what you see right now is that big tech is basically coming through the wall first uh, you see this with Microsoft. Microsoft says, okay, listen, we want to restart Three Mile Island and we want to uh, pay for all the electricity that comes out of these new, uh, or, or pay for all, all the electricity that is produced by this nuclear power reactor that is in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, but right now, what, what you see with Google, I think that what Google is doing is even more ambitious. Um, so they signed an agreement with Kairos Power. What Kairos Power is, I'm going to explain um, in a couple of minutes. I'm also trying to get someone from Kairos Power to come on to the channel to explain to you viewers uh, wh what their reactor technology actually is and how it works. I can give you a broad overview, but obviously that's never going to be uh, as detailed nor as good as that Per Peterson from Kairos Power could do, for instance. So why is this important, all this news? Uh, Carbon-free energy for data centers seems to be a big thing, and uh, I'm going to show you why this is a big thing. Um, you know, a nuclear power plant works practically always whenever it's needed. Uh, and what's interesting about this particular uh, nuclear design is that it works with triso fuel balls so triso pallets usually are like very small uh, these are kernels that are filled with uranium uh, enriched uranium and then that is put into graphite balls and these graphite balls are then uh, put into this reactor but this reactor basically is nothing but a vat a vat with a molten salt in it so these bad these balls basically they float in this uh in, in this nuclear reactor and, and when you have enough balls of this stuff inside this nuclear reactor then uh what you get is nuclear reactions and, and the heat that you then uh put into this molten salt then gets transferred into a heat exchanger loop but more of this later obviously so let's go to uh, the news, this is the Financial Time. Google orders uh, small modular reactors for its data centers. Uh, I don't believe how many, I believe they, they want to have 500 megawatts, that, that, that's where it says. So they want, to, uh, they want to build 500 megawatts worth of new small modular reactors in order to power uh, their data centers. 
uh, you can see uh, more news like this. Uh, so here you have, uh, let's see, where is this from? Oh, this is from Reuters. Reuters is, uh, is basically telling us the same news, even Google itself, they have their own blog. Uh, where we can can read this what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the links are available below so you can uh, see for yourself here is the announcement by Kairos power itself uh, where they uh, outline a lot of stuff uh, which is very interesting to know um, just wanted to show you a picture of the team of people that work at Cairo. So obviously this is a real company, uh, people that are actually doing stuff, uh, trying doing some engineering in this in this place. And uh, this is one of the things that I think that sets Kairos Power apart, because Kairos Power basically, uh, for my understanding, it began in Berkeley, uh, in the United States uh, near San Francisco, and, and the they came up with this idea if we have these these fuel balls filled with these uranium pallets these triso fuel pallets and, and and we put that into a pebble bat reactor which is basically uh, you know it, it, it's a hollow space basically that you fill up with all these balls and what you do is uh, you make sure that uh, the 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 the, the the physics of this thing you know the the way it is shaped and 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 the dimensions and everything uh once you have this this space filled with all these balls and you have the moderator in there what you get is uh, nuclear fission reactions and um this salt then gets uh, moved through a loop which helps you uh to to extract the energy that you can then uh, use to produce electricity now they were starting with uh, practical tests back in, I believe it was 2015 or 2014. And, and they had a thing that was called SEED. So it was C-I-E-T. And this was a pr basically a practical test uh, apparatus that was like multiple floors high, where they were actually trying to test, you know, how these balls would float in this situation. And they kept doing these practical tests. And that's the thing that I think is very interesting about about Kairos. They are very hands-on. They have a good understanding about, you know, the, the, the technical nature of this nuclear power reactor. They have a good understanding about nuclear physics. But they also know, you know, how this thing has to be built from an engineering perspective. So what you see right now, so this is, this is basically... Uh, um, um, a schematic view of this nuclear reactor so over here on the left side you have this reactor with this with this green stuff in there and i believe that the green stuff is meant to be uh the molten salt and you can see these these little balls in there it's it's supposed to look like balls i believe um so 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 this is basically what happens the the, the these these fuel balls these fuel uh elements they get actually uh inserted in the bottom because they 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 have they they have buoyancy so they want to go up uh, in this salt and then you get the fission reactions over here the salt then goes into the primary heat primary salt loop then you have an intermediate salt loop so the heat gets transported from this reactor into this heat exchanger and then into the next heat exchanger where the, the the secondary salt actually uh, turns the water that's in there into steam and this is then uh, the medium that we use to uh, turn the steam turbine and eventually you know make electricity in the generator so the specifications it's pretty interesting so it's 150 megawatt electric for a power plant and it turns out to be two units so there are two 75 megawatt electric uh, reactors in there. Now the reactor outlet temperature. I mean, this is this is all pretty interesting stuff. 650 degrees near atmospheric. There's no high pressure in this system. So basically, what you get is a a a, a pretty safe, pretty reasonably simple system uh, that doesn't require a lot of engineered safety 
uh, in order to 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 get to a working power plant, and and that's something that I, I I've always found interesting about these molten salt uh, reactor concepts. And for me, this is still a molten salt reactor concept. Uh, do I think that we don't need light water reactors ever anymore? I think that we still need to build well over a hundred EP one thousands and well over a hundred EPRs and well over a hundred. Uh, can do reactors and 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 whatever we can get our hands on but these kinds of reactors uh, i think are really interesting and we should we should pursue them we should make sure that we actually start building these kinds of reactors because this is what is going to put us into the future now the interesting bit about this company kairos is that they are actually already building a demonstration plant currently in Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So this uh, is the energy.gov uh, website, you know, the Office of Nuclear Energy. Over here you get an artist rendition of the uh, of the uh, low power demonstration reactor facility uh, and they already as you can see here uh, they're already uh, doing civil works uh, doesn't mean that they are actually uh, building the thing uh, but you know work has started they are actually uh, doing some work and they are going to uh, build this first reactor um, so it, I, I mean, it's it, this is what we need. This is what we need. We need hands-on experience with building these things, and actually getting uh, experience in you know, uh, getting uh, getting uh, getting a sense of how these things work. Now, just to uh, just to show you where this actually takes place. Uh, so this is the Oak Ridge National Laboratory site over here. You can see, uh, I believe that this is it. There's a lot of different, there were, there were a lot of different uh, reactor experiments that, that were uh, performed here. And one of the most interesting experiments, I I in my view, was the molten salt reactor experiment. Unfortunately, the United States decided that they didn't want to do uh, molten salt reactors anymore. Uh, so they stopped doing that. But I mean, look at this here, a high, a high flux uh, isotope reactor. So that's there. there's so much interesting stuff over here. And the fact that Kairos Power is actually building a new demonstration reactor on this site is really good news. Uh, I think that is something that we really need in order to make sure that we go into the future. Now, this is, uh, this is on the Google Data Center's website. Um, and, and still, if you if you look for uh, nuclear on this page, you can see it, it, it is mentioned zero times. But if we look for renewable, then we find it uh, six times. So back in 2021, because I believe that this was, oh no, this, this was in 2023, actually, they were still looking at, you know, 24-7 carbon-free energy. They were still talking about renewables a lot and, and and you see it's in all the messaging i i don't know if you if, if you can view that but in the background you can see windmills and everything um but currently if you look at their commitment that they that they just made with 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 kairos power and obviously all that we can learn right now is that basically google and all the other uh, uh big tech companies they they have finally understood that this is not the way forward. This is not the way it works. Yes, renewables are nice. Yes, renewables are cheap, but we can build a lot of renewables in, in, in a relatively short time. But these renewables are never going to, uh, you know, carry the load of a data center. That's simply impossible. So I took the information from this map and put it into my own map. As you know, this is, this is one of the things that I like to do the most. Um, so what I did was I, I basically uh, took green markers and put green markers at all the Google data centers that I could find on this map. And I also did one in the Netherlands because that's that's where I'm first going because I want to show you something about this this stuff. 
So over here we see this over here is a uh, data center, a Google data center. And Google data centers are different from Amazon data centers. They are different from Microsoft, different from Facebook, you name it. These, they have a pretty distinct design. These are more boxy. Uh, but what you can see, uh, this is not the best picture, but what you can clearly see, you can see HVAC units. Uh, you can see power delivery banks. Uh, you can see, you know, th this is a power hungry uh, data center. The the switch chart is right next to it. But th this site, this site, uh, the reason why I wanted to show you this, you, you can see the uh, the shades of the of the windmills, by the way. But this site has an absolute massive amount of 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 you know of fossil fuel. Uh, power production and I mean it's it's not far <laughs> just look the, the closest is, is, is a kilometer over there it's 1.3 kilometers over there and it's two and a half kilometers over there so um, yeah so, so this over here is a gas plant this over here is a coal plant that also runs on biomass this over here is another gas plant. They also are building a lot of, uh, or not a lot, they are building some solar panels over here, but you can see the windmills are everywhere. And this over here, this here, is a very interesting space in the Netherlands because this is something that I don't know whether other, many other countries have this or not, but this space that I'm making red right now, that used to be reserved for two new nuclear power plants. And for some reason, the Dutch government decided that they didn't want to build two new nuclear power plants over there. Uh, and, and I still think that they are going to regret that decision. Uh, so back to uh, America, uh, what we are going to see here is not much different than we are going to see from the Netherlands only. Um, over here, you know, this is also a, uh, a, a, uh, a a Google data center. So if we take this over here and we make this entire place a lot bigger than it used to be, uh, then you can see, I believe that it is Google, by the way. Uh, yeah, it probably is. So something like this, right? So um, maybe this is something else, but it, but it is a data center. That much is sure. Yeah, that I'm pretty sh pretty certain of. Um, but what you see here, this is the the, da the Dallies, I don't know, Dallies Google Data Center. So this is one of the first that you get to see when you go on the uh, Google website. Over here, you can see the switch chart again. Uh, loads of HVAC stuff, loads of power delivery, uh, power delivery stuff. It, it, it just, uh, it, it's the meta, basically. And I'm not talking about... Uh, I'm not talking about Meta as in Facebook, but simply the Meta. This is the way these uh, these data centers are built. Over here, you can see the same thing. Uh, this is in the neighborhood of Reno, I believe. What you can see here as well, again, uh, gas plant, gas plant. I don't know if this is still a gas plant or is it coal fired? I don't know. There's, it looks like there's a conveyor belt over there, but it, most of this is gas. And the interesting bit about this gas plant is that it is air cooled. So there's no uh, evaporation of water occurring here or evaporation straight into the air. There is some evaporation happening in here, but it's happening uh, inside the system. And if, if we go down over here, Las Vegas, you can see there is another large Google uh, data center again with its own large switch yard uh, and, and this this is basically what you can see all over the country now I made a video uh, about a week ago about this if you want to see that I, I would really recommend that you do it because uh, this here Loudoun County and near Dulles Airport what you see here all those yellow spots all of that are uh, data centers and it, it's just data center heaven for those who like data centers personally I'm one of those people because I think that the world thrives as we get more data centers out there uh, because obviously you know the thirst for data it comes with uh, becoming more affluent having more options being able to enjoy having more services and such so that's basically what I wanted to show you today. 
Um, I would like to thank everybody uh, for watching this video. If you made it this far, thank you very much. Don't forget to leave a like and leave a comment down below. And I really want to thank my Patreon supporters and today in particular the Anthropocene Institute and Ken and Brian for all they have done for me so far. Uh, also the Thorium Energy Alliance is, is a big contributor to the, to the channel. So if you want to help me uh, make more videos, please go uh, in the description below and make sure that you sign up to my Patreon page. Thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.